Fred Film Radio. I'm Matt Micucci from the 78th Venice Film Festival, and I'm very pleased to be joined by filmmaker Jan P. Matuszynski. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for the invitation. Hello. It's a real pleasure for us to have you here. You're presenting the film Leave No Traces. Uh, I watched it last night, thought it was uh, super intense, a really powerful story. And we should emphasize it's inspired based on a true story, right? Yeah, it's inspired on r real events, and it's also based on a reportage book written by uh, Cezary Wazalewicz called Leave No Traces, The Case of Grzegorz Przemek. Um, and that was a start for me, yeah. uh, because I got this book from my producers, Aneta and, and Leszek from Our Own Film. I did uh, my previous film, The Last Family, with them, and we were looking for another project. Yeah. And I read the book and I said, well, yeah, it's worth uh, making a film out of it. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite frightening. We're talking about uh, brutality. We're talking about authorities kind of abusing uh, their power. Uh, wh wh would you, how would you introduce it to the listeners who are not familiar with it? I would say that, you know, those days, violence and oppression are, are things that need to be talked about. Mm. And I think that this quite strange in some in some moments uh, the story from 1983 uh, Poland unfortunately everyone can understand it because it's not only one case and it's only you know it's happening all around the world I think there is this taste of obsession this is one of the things that I was uh, I was having that you know somewhere in the back of my mind really while doing the whole film and uh and st it's still there right. and you know i came here yesterday i heard some uh brief comments and i'm hearing you know brave thrilled uh and then so on and so on all it's all about fear yeah so it means that that the film works i think what, what kind of fear what kind of fear um well this is a story about an indi individual that fights against the system. Yeah, a and he seems to be alone in doing it almost. Gradually becomes more and more alone too. Yeah, and it's funny because, you know, there's his family in, in, in it somehow. Yeah. There's, there's a, a, a lot of people. The, the film is quite multi-layered. There's, you know, there's this main character who says he saw the beating of his friend. And we see that on screen at the beginning of the film, right? Right. But then you start to think, well, is that all? What was, what was behind it? And there are some questions that, that the government is bringing up. He is starting to hesitate. And I found it very interesting to, to make a film which works like... Uh, it's sort of a meditation yeah. on, on, you know, truth, yeah. obsession, no obsession, yeah, yeah obsession. And, uh, yeah, now, you know, I'm, I'm still thinking, thinking about it. Yeah, I'm well, still thinking about it because I'm, you know, with each interview, I'm bringing up another, you know, layer and I found it very interesting because there's still something to say. I was, I, I don't know if this was your intention, but like aside from the historical aspect of the film, I was frightened on a very personal level. I think maybe it's because at the beginning when this, ha this event happens, when the, the, the police co go up to these kids who are just having a bit of fun and, uh, and just all of a sudden all this situation unravels and it's completely unexpected. I just had this feeling that it wasn't necessarily in early 80s Poland and it wasn't even necessarily in Poland. It could have been anywhere else in the world. It could have been me. It could have been you. Is the, was that uh, yeah, something that, was that you also... Yeah, that was the Do you and think that this could happen today? Something like this could happen today? Unfortunately, yes. Mm. You know, um, you know, George Floyd case, for example, that's like the right. most famous. Exactly. Something like this can be famous, right? But this, these things happen in, in you know, various countries mm. and it's frightening. Do you think that if it happens in a country like Poland, it's maybe, it maybe doesn't get as much attention? I don't know, it's hard to say. You know, during the last uh, two months, it was like three cases of you know, police uh, beating too hard somebody that was you know, taken to custody. Mm. and uh, passed away in, in, in Poland. And wow. uh, 
of course the, that's the question of the brutality that that the police is is using sometimes maybe it's necessary i don't know i'm not i'm not a policeman but when i hear that there are several cases like this mm. and you know police is here everywhere to protect mm. and we're starting to, to to be frightened i mean that's that's not fine right no well it shouldn't be anyways in a in a in a, <laughs> in a proper world and you know i'm i'm really really uh how to say i i am very curious about uh how this film will work uh you know in a couple of months what will i get from the audience because are you worried i'm curious you're curious I you're not you you're know not worried about us why, why i should be worried i don't know i said maybe maybe making a statement can can also have its negative uh i, I did this film because i'm worried this is the only uh -huh. thing i can say that yeah, yeah. this is out of you know fear right in a way for sure because i uh you know the uh, Grzegorz Przemek was uh was arrested because he refused to show his id in that time the the martial law was um, suspended in Poland mm. so he didn't have to show it right and he's actually said he knows that he knows that because he was raised in a, in a home where those values were important yeah and uh and this is is it a, an act of courage or it sh is it you know normal behavior yeah. this is one of the questions that i that i have you know now because i'm i'm pushing this film to the world it's not mine anymore it's you know, today is the world premiere it's not mine anymore okay it's, it's for the audience to to take something from this um yeah. from this film but but i stay with with those questions still yeah I'd love to, uh, yeah, I have so many questions that I want to ask you. We're going to have to wrap it up. One, just one more question. I, I feel like also uh, one, of the, one of the fascinating aspects of this film was the one that kind of deals with the press and how they're involved in the whole story. I was, I was curious about the, uh, the, BBC, the, the involvement of the BBC journalist who seems to have a positive effect at the, st at the beginning of, the, of this event. And then later on, you see also how the Polish press at the time actually uh, went again, you know, helped the authorities and, you know, the people who were the perpetrators of the beating. Uh, do you think that uh, the press and uh, journalism played a huge part in shaping people's uh, uh, perspective on, on what was going on at the time? Oh, it works, you know, today. <laughs> today, too, yeah. I mean, if you have that kind of, a, you know, massive tool yeah. in your hand. Who can you trust, though? Who can you trust? Is there anybody you can trust? I, I can it trust my wife. <laughs> Are you my sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, she's here. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, but is there anybody we can trust? Is, is, can we trust an artist, for example? Can we trust you as a filmmaker? You can give it a try. You can go to the cinema, sit there for this, you know, o over two and a half hour long film and uh, and then decide mm. I I really care about freedom of, of the viewer you know right. I don't want to say that oh you know there's the story and this guy did wrong this guy did you know did it well he's fine he's okay this one is bad now I'm not that kind of uh, director I, I prefer to you know put into film questions that I have you know, w when I'm going through this particular story and not actually giving answers, maybe just to meditate on those mm. things. Um, I think that, you know, every each of us should dig deeper, you know, read the whole book, not just the cover. Yeah. Don't stop on the hashtag. That's, it's that's, difficult that's, that's to do <laughs> because yeah, of social media and uh, yeah. the way that we get our information and it, it's like, you know, when, when I'm, for example, doing an interview, I prefer to sit and talk for like 90 minutes because I know that Me there too. is a conversation. <laughs> Me too. And <laughs> especially now, you know, we're here and Venice is happening, but we're still in the pandemic yeah. situations, kind of. And I think all of us miss the conversations. I mean, oh, yeah. the exact, you know, when you're sitting in front of 
the other guy or, or girl and, and talk long. I had some conversations, you know, uh, online or, uh, or through phone during the pandemic because people didn't know what to do, so we could call somebody. Mm. But this is, this is a value that is very important to me. And uh, I believe that, s that cinema is some sort of, uh, you know, maybe that's just a try, but uh, of a you know, deeper conversation that yeah. you're bringing up, not just like a note, this guy was beaten to death by the policeman there, and then he died, you know, two days later, and the government is bad. No, it's not that easy. There's much more to tell about this particular case. Yeah. You have to spend more time thinking about it. And you know what? Film is still the most uh, efficient of all the tools that we have. I have only, the, that's only my tool. I don't write books. Yeah. I'm only a film director. Well, once you do it well, and that's that must be said. I, I wish, I also wish I could talk with you for 90 minutes, but I'm afraid they're kicking us out. So, <laughs> so okay. well, but it's, it, it's been great. It's been great. So thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I remind the listeners, the film is called Leave No Traces, and this is Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.